N-A-T, Nat, and its cousin Pat. It's not a lot of magic that allows us to connect to the internet and connect all over the world. It's a matter of a lot of network address translation. In this nugget, we'll take a look at exactly how that works. The day we lied about our IP address. Now, why would we do such a thing? Well, let's start this story by taking a look at IP addresses, specifically IP addresses. Private IP addresses, an example of them are anything that starts with a 10. There's some other ranges as well, but an IP address in general is simply a street name and a house number, or a network name and a host number, and every computer on a network needs to have some type of an IP address to communicate using IP. So a private address space like the 10 Anybody can use. So we could have, for example, 50,000 different customers, 50,000 different businesses, and they could all use the 10 network. Why? Because those private addresses are isolated and not allowed on the internet. So they can use the 10 network in their own company, but they can't use it on the internet. Now, what is the internet use? Well, the internet uses global addresses. And a global address are all handed out by the IANA, the Internet Assigned Number Authority, through the local registries based on the part of the world that you live in. And all the global addresses are managed by the service providers. So if a customer needs an IP address, like this router right here, the customer can connect to the, through the service provider, be assigned an IP address the, via PPPoE or via DHCP or statically assigned. And this is a, a global address. So the router can talk on the internet, no problem. The internet knows how to get back to that IP address. So why do we need to lie about our IP addresses? Well, consider this. Let's go ahead and take this PC right here, and this PC wants to go out to the internet. And let me clear off the screen a little bit. So the PC wants to go out to the internet. As he sends packets out to the internet, his source IP address is going to be from the 10 network. And the service provider says, eh, 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 eh. We don't allow any private addresses on the internet because it would be confusing. Private addresses have to stay private. They're not being allowed on the internet. So what about Bob? Bob is his client. He wants to go to the internet. What do we do? We lie. That's why I called it the day we lied about our IP address. And here's what happens. Using the magic of something called network address translation and its cousin port address translation, this router can say, well, you know what? I've got a beautiful IP address. And if Bob wants to go out to the internet, what I can do is take his source address, maybe it's 10.0.0.2, and I can swap it out just the source address as the packet goes out to the internet. So if this guy's going out to google.com, the source address here would be 10002 going to whatever the IP address of Google. But once it goes through the router and he does his NAT magic, the packet will now show as going from 12.12.0.1 out to Google. And this router maintains the memory of what he mapped it to. So when the reply comes back from Google to 12.12.0.1, this router says, oh, 12.001 with these specific ports and that IP address he was going to, I know it came from Bob, and he untranslates it and forwards it back to 10.0.0.2. So that's the magic. So network address translation is when we do a one-to-one -one mapping. Maybe this customer would be on the outside, would get his own IP address. This customer would get his own IP address. This customer would get his own IP address. But in most cases, we don't have three global addresses for three individual clients. So instead, we just overload on a single address, and that's called PAT, Port Address Translation. And the, this device here is tracking all the sessions. So what I did, because I wanted to capture all the traffic, I have this client at 10.0.0.2. He is wired into this router. And we're going to capture traffic here and here so we can see his pre-NAT address and post-NAT address. So let's bring him in. And let's go ahead and generate some traffic. So here is a workstation. He's on the 10 network. We can verify that by using the command ipconfig. He's at 10.0.0.2 and ipconfig slash all to verify that he has a good default gateway and good DNS server, which he does. So we'll go bring up browser and let's go out to cbtnuggets.com. There should be a DNS resolution, a three-way handshake, and the content flows in. Great, so I've captured that in the background. Let's go ahead and stop that. I'm gonna pause for a moment. And let's bring in the capture. Okay, so here's the capture. Here's the pre-NAT. So this is the traffic before it actually hit the router. And as we capture it, it's the coming from 10.0.0.2. That's the source IP address destined to 8.8.8.8. That's the DNS server. And the reply for that DNS request came back from 8.8.8.8 back to 10.0.0.2. So that's at this portion of our network right here before we actually went out to the internet. 
If we look at the same that same traffic, but on this network segment after the route wireless router does NAT, or in this case the wired router does NAT, the post NAT would look like this. So if we get them side by side. So you'll notice here, I get my pin out. So for packet number two, we had the packet, the response coming back from 8888 back to 10002. Now the response comes back from 8888 going back to 121201. That's the outside IP address of the router. So the internet thinks that this device at 121201 is very, very busy. In fact, it thinks it's so busy that if all three devices or all four devices or all 20 devices on my internal network all went out to the internet, they would all appear as coming from 12.12.0.1 because that's the single global address that was given to the wireless router who's maintaining the network address translation on behalf of this internal network. So that, my friends, is how we can make everybody happy. We can take a single global address that was given to a customer, for example, for the outside interface of the router, and we can hide all of our other internal addresses using network address translation and port address translation so that the internet sees the one global address and this router is responsible for making sure the untranslations on the way back for the return traffic make it to their rightful destinations. I've had a lot of fun sharing why we need NAT and how it works. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.